When the skies are this busy, the last thing anyone needs is a technical glitch. National Air Traffic Services had an issue with their flight planning system to the point where they were inputting plans manually. They couldn't keep up, so the traffic flow restrictions came in. And so started the delays and cancellations. Passengers waiting around, eyes and ears open for any tidbit of information. Hello, um, we're currently in Keys Airport, travelling back from a family wedding. This man's um, flight was delayed, but the people he was with had even worse luck. Um, some of our party have actually had their flight from Gatwick actually cancelled tonight, and unfortunately there's no flights from tomorrow, so they're trying to look for alternatives. Another traveller stuck in Budapest says useful information was in short supply. We wouldn't have known this had we not, um, you know, been, been sort of searching Twitter, looking at the news on our phones. We'd have just turned up to the airport expecting our flight to be, uh, to be going. I do think that the communication from the airline in this instance hasn't been ideal and they've left us a little bit out to, uh, out to fend for ourselves. On social media, people were sharing how long they'd been sat on the tarmac. These passengers did get water in the end. Another said, the pilot says he hasn't seen anything like this in 20 years of service. And one passenger even managed a shot of the cockpit, adding, I cannot see us leaving Madeira today. I am very cognizant that this will disrupt people's travel plans. Uh, those who are waiting to arrive in the UK, those waiting to depart. And I do sympathise with any disruption that they may be experiencing. Over 200 flights departing from Britain were cancelled today. And the delays are expected to drag on, which an aviation analytics company says will inevitably result in cancellations. Multiple airlines have released statements, all with similar messaging. The key points being that they're sorry to passengers for the inconvenience, that the issue was beyond their control, to monitor emails and departure boards, and that they're working closely with National Air Traffic Services. Within hours, the air traffic team had figured out the problem, adding that they're sincerely sorry for the disruption, which of course can't be remedied too quickly. There'll be a backlog, not the best end to bank holiday. Well, I've been speaking to Paul Charles, former director of communications at Virgin Atlantic, and I asked him if he was shocked that the flight planning system had fallen over. I'm really surprised. This is a significant outage. It should never have happened. It is critical infrastructure to UK aviation. And you've got to ask why it fell over and why there was no backup system in place, which was able to simply and swiftly uh, have an impact and be able to stop these sorts of delays taking place. We should never have got to a situation of manual processing flights into and out of the UK. And that say that safety is always their priority and that uh, you know, passengers have been kept safe today. Do, do, we, do we accept that on face value? Yes, I absolutely believe them on safety and no one working in the aviation industry will ever put safety at risk. And that's why they have manual processors which in turn lead to delays because it's such a slow manual process because it has to be safe. So do you think this is down to the resourcing of national air traffic services? Well, I think resourcing has to be looked at and there needs to be a government investigation into the critical aviation infrastructure in this country. Just a few weeks ago, we saw the E-gate system fall over. That collapsed for several hours and led to delays across the UK. Now we're seeing on a critical bank holiday in peak August season, the flight planning system fall over for nearly eight hours. Why are our key systems falling over? That's what the government needs to be looking at. I'm not sure it's a safety issue. It's more a stability issue. And, and they should be asking some pretty tough questions. And uh, will all passengers who are delayed more than the statutory amount get the compensation that they're automatically due? Because airlines are are often, you know, notorious for sort of delaying paying and not volunteering the fact that they, they, they owe passengers the money. Sadly, there will be many thousands of people who lose out. And they'll lose out because some airlines, you, you can guarantee, will try not to pay out when they don't need to. But the airlines will say it's not our fault. This was due to a third party in the case of that. And they should be offering compensation. 
the airlines, of course, have to get you on the next available flight. It is their responsibility to get you on their next service. But if you're in a, in a Greek island somewhere today and there's only one flight a week, you're in real trouble. You're going to face extra costs because it's going to be some time before you get home. Uh, so any advice, again, as somebody who knows the industry, for someone who's due to fly tomorrow, doesn't know what to do, can't get any information? Do you just have to keep checking? Well, first of all, today is a really good example of why you need to take out travel insurance whenever you travel beyond the UK. That's the first thing. Secondly, we are going to see many more cancellations tomorrow because you've got aircraft out of place all over the world. You've got crew and pilots who've gone out of hours beyond their legal hours, so they can't fly the planes. So the airlines are going to have to cancel some flights tomorrow, and that will affect many more thousands of people who are due to travel. This is a six-hour outage that is causing a five-day impact. Is this kind of problem, um, you know, common around the world, or is it a British disease? Is this another sort of sick man of Europe thing? Well, we have seen outages of critical uh, software systems in aviation in America. We've seen those sorts of outages in France before, but it doesn't happen that often. It's pretty rare. The problem is once is too often. This is critical infrastructure and it shouldn't be happening at all. So that's why the government needs an investigation to find out really what the status is of our aviation infrastructure. Paul Charles, thank you very much indeed. Thank you.